is. Amen. How many knows that God can give you blessings that you don't know where they come from and how you got them, but God just knows how to do it in them. He knows that when the doctor bill comes due and you just look at your you look at your checkbook or you look at your, your resource bill, I, God, I don't have that. I don't have no way of paying that. And you know what? Because you were faithful in your ties and often did what you said, God said, I got you. I got you back. Yes, don't worry, I got you back. It'll, it'll happen. And you know what? It's not in our timing. It's not in the way we want it to happen. Sure. We want it to happen. And you know, God's, how many of us God's long time God? Amen. Yes. He's, he's never late. He's always on time. And he always comes just in the nick of time. And he knows that that bill has to be paid before they shut your electric off. Shut your water, your gas off, and God comes and makes a way. Amen. And that's what my God does. I'm going to tell you something. You cannot go wrong by paying your time on and giving it to God. Amen. Because it says God opens the windows of heaven. Pours out a blessing you will not be able to receive. Amen. Now, he might not give you all you want, Brother James. Just, you know. You might be wanting that brand new car out in the driveway and all that stuff. God doesn't do that. He just meets your needs. Yes. Yeah, not your wants. So let him do that this morning. As we pray, just let God bless you. Lord, I come to you this morning. God, with a heart of giving. God, I just want to give to you. And I want to teach everyone in this building, God, that we need to give to you, God, that we can have your blessings. Lord, I know that your word says that if we would just... God, pay our tithes and honor. God has said you would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing and it would not be hindered to receive. But if we don't, it says, God, we are cursed. But they curse. That you close the windows of heaven and you do not bless them people. And I don't want none of us to be cursed, oh Lord. I want us to be blessed. Let us be blessed this morning. God, not just because we want all the money, but God, we want them to be blessed more than we need the money. But I know that you take care of us and you meet our needs. And I thank you for that right now. I thank you for all that you do for us. And I thank you for everyone here. Bless them today and bless the giver. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 The Lord of Amazing Grace back in the 1700s, he got stranded on that island. And there's a church there, Brother Lewis. It's a, it's a beautiful brick building. It's old. I mean, it's, but they've, you know, kept it up. But anyway, he sat at the back window of the church at a little desk. And he looked out over the ocean. He could see just he could see the whole ocean from because up on, on the hill. The ocean's all right there. And he sat back there and he wrote the song Amazing Grace. And he just probably sit there and reflected on how great God is, the amazing grace of God. Probably how God has saved your life. And, and this is what he wrote. Just listen to these words, how beautiful they are. And what God did for you and I and what he's still doing. Sing this song, please sing this.
blessed with him, amen? Amen. amen. Right. We are in no way professionals or even close to it. We're the same. Amen. And we just amen. worship the Lord. So, amen. Mm -hmm. amen. I, I know God hears it. And, and, and you know what? It might not sound good out there, but God said, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful music to me. And I know He does because we're singing. We're going to sing the heart, brother Danny. That's right. Amen. And God bless us. Go ahead.
He said, can I preach Sunday? Don't push it. He said, you don't, he, don't said, I don't, he said, I don't think you uh, realize how serious that surgery was. He said, you might be held on the outside, but not on the inside. Amen. So he said, I think it's over five pounds again, so you come back. The pastor here preached. Take it uh, easy. No driving. Yeah. Yeah, you can't keep a good horse down. Yeah. <laughs> that horse is going to drive. So I'm, I'm still driving, but anyway, uh, praise the Lord. So Amen. we're honored to have my Maybe brother again. Yes, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Preacher. He's going to make for you this morning. And I'm sure he's going to bless you with a great yes, word. Pastor, you got me. You see that song, wonderful, wonderful Jesus is the baby. Amen, amen. Counselor, Prince of Peace. Yes. Mighty amen. God is he. Amen. God is only as mighty as you allow him to be amen. in it. your life. Amen. Can I get a good amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'm going to be ministering on trust in this morning. <laughs> and if you'd like to turn your Bibles with me to Psalms. Amen. The 16th amen. chapter. <laughs> and I'd like to minister to you on trust. You know, you can read the 11th chapter of Hebrews and it talks about faith. But you have to trust in God to have faith. Yes, amen. And faith comes what? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So if you've got the Word of God living in you, then you're walking in faith and trust in God. Amen. I I ministered one time to the district rally in uh, Payette, Idaho, and uh, all the ministers and everybody get together and their wives, and that's who you're preaching to, kind of get things going again in your district, uh, get people in the church, and, 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 and get away from, you know, the pulpit a little bit yourself and hear the Word of God and let the Word of God come in because. That's how you become today. Trusting in God is getting the word in your life. Right. And I, there's nothing like trusting God. Amen. Sometimes Amen. everything looks bleak. Sometimes everything looks like uh, it, it's never going to end or you're, you're never going to get through the problem that you've got. But what you have to do is put your faith and trust in a Living God. Yeah. Yeah. A living God. Amen. Amen. That, 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 that we can trust and believe and know, you know, no matter, you know, just like all the people come up out of Egypt and they're standing there before the Red Sea and they're looking over and they see the dust from the chariots and all the horsemen and here comes Pharaoh and, you know, and, and, and what, what do you do? You know, and a lot of people doubted God. Yes, yes. You know, and when they doubted God, then they did not have faith in God. They didn't trust Him. God is a deliverer. Yes, He is. Amen. Sometimes you say He's my healer, He's my counselor. You know, He He's my prince of life. But more than that, he's my deliverer. Amen. He delivers me out of the problems I have amen. because yes. I have faith in God. Yes, amen. And when you have faith in God, then you can be an overcomer. It says in Isaiah that there's a highway to heaven. Amen. Amen. And only the righteous go there. Amen. And you become righteous because if you believe in God. Amen. Amen. And that's how Abraham was. Abraham believed in God. Yes. Therefore, he was justified by faith or trust in God. And he could talk to God. Mm -hmm. How many talk to God? Amen. You know, and you talk to God by your praising, by your singing, by your worshiping, and that's why everybody should get in, in an attitude of worship to be able to praise God, to let God come into your life. Why do you raise your hand? Amen. You can't hug somebody unless you've got your hands out and your arms extended. And if you want to hug the Holy Ghost, if you want to hug Jesus, if you want Jesus to hug you, come on. You know? The Scripture tells us if you want friends, be friendly. 
If you want God, then be a friend of God and ask God to come into your life and walk and talk and help and build you up. Yes. So that you can be a Christian that would help other people, that you're not always so weak that you don't have a word. And you're always so poor because that you've not let God into your life. You've right. not let God bless you and touch you. Amen. I can stand here and I can see a few people, or I can stand here and I can see this church full. This church will be full if you believe in God, if you trust in God, if you keep persevering, and if you keep looking to God, God will give you the things that you need. We need this church full of people worshiping God, praising God, lifting up their hands, and doing a service or a worship unto God that God can come into your life. Yes. If you don't ask Him, He's not going to come. Amen. But if you seek and knock what Scripture says, you will find, because you have faith that you seek and you knock and you persevere and you keep going to say, Jesus, I'm going to serve you. I don't care how bad things look right now. I'm still going to put my trust. I'm still going to put my faith in you because you're the living God and you're the only answer for my problem. Sometimes it's not a doctor. Sometimes it's not a lawyer. Sometimes it's not the community. But it's Jesus is there to help you through those things. Amen. And if you put your faith and trust in Him and believe in Him, therefore God will come and give you the answer. He will fill the bill. No matter what it is. Amen. Amen. You believe God for that. Amen. Come on, let's get a good praise the Lord. Bless God. Bless the Lord. If you've got that scripture and if you've got your Bible, the 16th chapter, and just I'm going to read to you the first verse there. And David was a man that loved God. Yes. Oh, he put God before everything else. It didn't matter how bad the, the things looked. Remember when Absalom, his son, was going to take the kingdom. But he continued to believe in God, David did. You know, and David wasn't a perfect man. He sinned. He killed a man. He did everything else. But God still forgave him. Yes. God is a God that wants you to have the faith and trust that when I ask him to forgive my sin, my sin is gone. Yes. As far as the east is from the west. You know, he would bury it in the sea of forgetfulness, never to bring it back up against you again. Do you have faith and trust God to do that Amen. for you? Amen. 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 We don't want to walk in doubt. We don't want to walk in fear, but we want to walk in trust that God is going to minister to the problems and the needs that we have. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 Psalm 16.1 Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. trust. Amen. What's he saying here? He has doubt in God? No. He has faith in God. Yes. Amen. yes. Amen. He has trust. I'm going to trust him for the things that I have need of. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to trust him for my paycheck. Yes, amen. Electric bills don't stop. No, those bills stop. They just continue coming. And if you don't have the resources and things to meet that, you're going to be sitting in the dark. Because they're going to shut off your electric. Amen. You have to have things while we're in this life. One lady said, oh, if I could just have new carpet, I could be the happiest person in the world. <laughs> but see, there's dirt on the ground and they get on the bottom of your shoes and you're still walking on that carpet. Right. And pretty soon you're going to need a new carpet. Right. Yeah. So, some guys, I love to just, you know, have my fishing pole. 
I would love to have these things. But you know what? God will supply those things. It says, my God shall supply all my needs according to the riches in God. Oh, yeah. What does God own? He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. No, he owns all the gold. He owns everything anyway. There was a little story that I used to like to tell. It was like this guy. He had this great big chunk of gold. And he was standing in line to get up to talk to Jesus. And it was getting heavier and heavier. And he was trying to carry this big chunk of gold. Finally, he got up before the Lord. And he said, Lord, look what I bought for you. And Jesus said, that's just a chunk of pavement. Get back to the back of the line. <laughs> See, it doesn't mean nothing, God, because God, everything, he has everything. That's right. One of these days when we pass from this life to that life, we're not going to need anything. That's right. Because God's going to supply everything. <laughs> and if you believe that he's going to supply everything, then why doesn't you believe or trust God that he's going to supply the things you need? Now, yeah. while you're here. Yes, amen. Who are you? Amen. You're God's children. Yes, amen. Pastor. You know? Yes. You're not a red-headed stepchild. They get beat and slapped around. But you are a son of God. Amen. You know the scripture says, does not do you not know who that you are? Uh, amen. Or who you will be. Amen. You will be like him. I trust I'll be like him. Amen. David was talking about faith and trust here. And in this song of trust is to be a portion in life. Mm -hmm. To be able to have, to be able to share. And that he knew that this trust would preserve him in death. Amen? He said, in the second verse, he said, My goodness extendeth not to thee. Better I have no good besides you. The only thing that we need in this life, you know, sometimes we need a spouse or we need a teacher, but we have to have the main teacher, which is the Holy Ghost, that will move and minister and open up the scripture. If you want to know, it says, if any man like wisdom want, let him ask of God who gives liberally. Yes, you know, and, and upgrade if not. He will not give you the things that you ask for unless you're asking for a new Mercedes. <laughs> but he will give you the things that you need and the knowledge you need to walk and trust in a living God that let God move. <laughs> God will move mountains. Yes. If you have the faith and the trust of a grain of mustard seed. Yes. Say into this mountain, be thou removed. Amen. 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 There was a guy, uh, I read the story, it's a true story, about this man that, that he told his mom, he says, I'm going to go out into the woods on this mountain, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to trust God. He said that if I ask God that this mountain will be moved, it will be moved. Amen. And I'm going to pray God until God answers my prayer. That takes a lot of trust and faith in God. Amen. I'm not going to leave the mountain until it's removed. And there was a Men that drove up, or some men that drove up in this cube like van, they got out and come to the door and knocked. And they wanted to talk to him. And they said, Mom said, he's out on the mountain. They went out on the mountain. And they said, we found some minerals in this mountain. And we would like to mine it. And they came in and they removed the mountain. Amen. See, God will remove mountains if you have the faith. That's 
I don't know if you need, knew Brother Marsh, that he was a minister, and they would have to take him and bring him up and, and, and stand him up at the pulpit because he had the braces and stuff on his legs. But when he was a younger man, he, he went out, he ministered this, he went out and he wanted to read the Bible. And he could not read. He was a Jesus. And he, he took the Bible and went out and prayed and prayed and sought God. And God gave him the knowledge to read the Bible. Amen. Put Amen. your hand in the newspaper. He could not read it. Amen. See, God will do the things they ask him, but you only believe. See, people don't believe. People don't put their heart in it. People don't put their trust in it like they used to do. And, you know, when people didn't have all this technology, when they didn't have all these TVs, when they had time to just go to church or they had time to read the Bible, then things would happen in their lives and they could see a change and a difference. But people are so removed from God, instead of going to a fur closet, they become a couch potato and sit there and watch TV. Amen. Right. Yeah, that's right, Pastor. That's hard preaching, and I know that it is, but you know what? If we want God to do things in our life, if we want to trust God, hear, hearing God, hearing cometh by faith, and faith cometh by reading the Word of God. Yes, if you don't take time right. to read God's right. Word, nothing's going to happen. Right. The Scripture says that if you get ready to witness, if you get ready to preach, if you get ready to do these things, then God will give you the words to say because He will bring it back from your remembrance. Yes. If there's nothing to remember, if you've not read the Word, if you've not read the Scripture, how can God bring it back from your remembrance in order to tell somebody and says, if anybody asks you anything, you should be able to give them an answer. That's right. If you can't give an answer, then you need to get back to the Bible. Some people ask me a question, if I'm not sure, I said, I'll get back with you later when I read the scripture and find out what God's got to say about it. I don't care what the lawyer has to say about it. I don't care what the counselor or the president, I don't care what they got to say about it. I want to know what God said. You got to know what God said. Yes in order to know what to do or how to remedy the right. problem. Right. Amen? Yes, amen. amen. Bless God. Let's look at this a little bit more, what David was talking about. Yes, amen. David describes the beauty of his spiritual inheritance in terms of similar to the divine allotment of the promised land to Israel. Look back at the things that God has done. Uh -huh. Amen. And that, that will build your faith in God and say, look, this is like the angel who appeared before Gideon and he says, oh mighty man of valor. You know, he looked at himself and he said, why are you calling me that? Because, you know, he says, I am the least of the tribe of Manasseh. Who am I to get an army together? Who am I to do anything? Yes. Well, if you don't believe that you can do anything, then don't do anything. You're just going to sit on a pew. But if you believe that you can do something, if you believe that you are a mighty man of power, if you believe that you're a man or woman of God, yes. you can be like David, you know, when he was talking to Goliath, why defileth the God? He said, this day I will have your head. Yeah. Just a boy in a sling and Goliath blast at him. He said, why do you send a, 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 a boy with sticks or stone? If you would look at the two, you would think, and, 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 and if you look at it in a carnal mind, you'd say, there's no way this boy could beat up on this giant. But God's got a different plan. Yes. 
Yes. Just like the stone that he put in the sling, when he slung it, it went to do the thing that God wanted it to do. To show that he is the Almighty. That he is the one that answers prayer. He is the one that comes in the time of need. Here's Saul and, and, and all the Hebrew Israelite hiding between, you know, bushes and rocks and peering out this giant that come out for 40 days and 40 nights. Saying, if you've got one man that would come out and fight me. Nobody had the faith and trust in God that David had. If a giant come in here right now, how many of us would trust God that we could take a stone or take anything to take this person out? Jesus, help us. Yes, yes. 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 Praise God. He had the faith in God that God could take the giant out. Jesus, help us. Bless God. Amen. So the verses are called by Peter in Acts 2 and 25 and 28 to 31 and verse 10 is cited by Paul in Acts 13, uh, 35 as referring to the resurrection of Christ at my right hand, the portion of the protector or defender, the language here illustrates and the prediction of the Messiah refers to Jesus and his return. Bless God. Trust in God with all of your heart yes. and lean not on your own understanding. Oh, amen. That's right. Right. And he says that he will make your path straight. Yes, amen. Straight is the way and straight is the gate. And there was the road that led to the kingdom amen. of God. Amen. Those that go to heaven, you know, you have to take it by force. We're to fight every day against the devil. Amen. And he will try to come up with all kinds of gimmicks, all kinds of tactics, all kinds of ways to trip you up. Yes. And he's good at what he does. Yes. Yes. But you know, on the other hand, God is better at what he does. Amen. Amen. Bless God. We have a God that's going to take care of us. Amen. When, I, when, when uh, things got bad for me, and I was living in Emmett, Idaho. I worked at the mill for seven years. And the mill shut down. There was no work. In Ada County, which is like Franklin County, only Ada County is in Boise. That year, there was only 19 housing permits drawn. Ernst, the place out there, wanted to hire somebody. And they had people wrapped around the store two times for just one job. There was no jobs. I went to this real estate company and I told them, I says, I need to sell my house. They almost started laughing. You know, it's a small valley, a small place, 5,000 5, people, population. And they had like 560 homes for sale. They said, you won't sell your home. But within a month, these two people come walking through the house and they bought it. Amen. When, when God moves, and if you trust in God, God can do the impossible. Yes, amen. That's amen. I had all this stuff. I think, what am I going to do with this stuff? Mm -hmm. And I seen an advertisement about an auctioneer, and I thought, well, auction everything off. So the day that the auction came, it was raining, so. He called me and says, we're going to take everything down to uh, right down the road where they had the rodeos and stuff. There was a fairgrounds there. 
And he said, we're going to take the stuff down at the fairgrounds. And I had like 20 trucks of people coming and taking my stuff out of my house. And taking off down the road. And I'm like, ah, where's the stuff going? I don't even know if it's going to make it there. I went down there and the auctioneer told me, he says, I'll walk through your stuff in a couple hours. They started auctioning it at noon. At 8 o'clock in the evening, it was just wrapping it up. My bills came to, if I remember right, it was like $12,400, somewhere in that area. And the auction here tallied up all the money and gave me $12,400. It paid off everything. Amen. that I owed. Now I did not owe nothing. And I was, I had a job in California and I didn't know how I was going to get there. I, I went and called and they wanted $142 for a flight to San Francisco from Boise. Didn't have money. I got a telephone call. <laughs> the real estate company said, uh, Th there's uh, money here that uh, that is owed you, and it's $142. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what it cost me to try to cost me. Listen, God will meet your need if you sit here and you wonder what you're going to do. God will meet your need and yes. supply the yes. things that you need. Yes, Pastor. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to tell you this, and then I'm going to close. There was a young man in 1855, and his, I won't give you his name yet, but he was 18 years old, and, and he, he had uh, left this community church. Life. And he goes to Boston, and he's going to make his fortune. Jesus. And he started going to a Bible teaching church, Pentecostal church. And he decided that he wanted to join the church. Well, the deacons all got together and they started asking him questions. And he did. They said, why do you need God and what has God done for you? And he's like, I don't know. And anyway, they said, well, you need to take a Bible study for a year. And so he goes to the Bible study for a year and he comes back before the deacons again and the board to join the church and they're like asking him questions and he was still completely illiterate about God, about the Bible, about anything. And they said, well, here. They put him in a Sunday school class for another year. He appears before the board and He's still a little bit. He's still a moment of them. He don't know the gospel. He don't know the Bible. They're like, well, we'll go ahead and accept him as a member because he's so persistent. And they thought, this boy is never going anywhere as far as being a teacher or anything in the church because he's just, even his language is like, you know, not very appealing when he talks. And they let him join anyway because they thought, well, he's persistent and he's taken the classes, he's done the things that we want, and we know that he wants to join the church and, and that uh, he must love the Lord somewhere or another because he just continues to come. And everybody had completely like wrote him off. And later on, did you ever hear of D.L. Moody? If, if, if uh, you've not heard of him, you've not done very much study because he's kind of like the backbone of the history of the church. Yeah. Yeah, See, people can write you off. God had a different purpose for D.L. Word. Uh, and because 
of his mercy and God's grace. He can make you something to other people you look like. You're nothing. Nothing. Amen. Just like David looked to Goliath. Goliath kills him. He's nothing. But God makes you something. Amen. Thank you, something. If you want that something in your life, if you put the trust that we've been talking about and read the 16th chapter 1 through 11 and, and start studying and finding out God, how David trusted God and put his faith in a living God and said, I know that my Redeemer liveth and God will move and minister in our hearts and in our lives and in God is not changed. In Hebrews 13, it said God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, we're serving a God that never changes. And if you want to change in your life, if you want to be like a D.L. Moody, if you want to be like David, if you want to be like the Scripture, if you want God working and talking in your life, then you want to do something. Yeah, you can make a change in your life. If you believe and put that faith and trust in a living God, that will do something different in your life. Amen. Yes. And if you want that and need that, yes. then God is here today. Amen, Pastor. I want uh, all eyes closed and all heads bowed. Amen. With nobody looking around, I'm going to ask you, how many of you want a change in your life? How many of you want to let God come in and give you the change that we're talking about this morning. You're right about that, Richard. Everybody does. I see hands coming up. People want to be like David. People want to have the trust and faith in God to believe that God can move and minister and change and come into your life and give you something that the world can't give. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. world won't give you trust. The world will take that away. The world won't give you pain. The world can't save you. Amen. The world can't do anything for you except for pull you down. And when you're down, they'll kick you. You can't believe in our government today. You can't believe in the things that they're doing. Yeah. Amen. And when they're letting ministers, homosexual ministers in the pulpits. Oh, yes. God's not approving that. No, that's right. Amen. God is against it. God closed the doors on that. Years ago, when the angels went into Sodom to bring Lot and his family out, the minute that town woman, those angels or those men, Lot went out and said, I've got two daughters that's never been with men. Their virgins take them. They didn't want one right. And they was trying to find the angels and they struck them blind. And they went in and they closed the door. They closed the door to homosexuality. All right. All right. Shows that it's wrong. But if you read the first chapter of Romans, I don't know why I'm saying this. All right, go ahead. It shows you that an unnatural That's right. Luckily we got a God that's loving and forgiving yes. you know Amen. what? Yes, they God can. can bring those people out. Yes, they can. He can give them deliverance. Yes, they can. Deliver the drug addict or the alcoholic or the homosexual. Mm -hmm. God is a forgiving God and yes, God yes, loves. Yes, but God forbid that we would continue in sin, Paul. Right. Right. Yes, yes. 
And both children are right under you to sin now. But if you do sin, then you've got an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ. Yes, Christ, amen. Who is a perpetuation for your sin, not your sin, only for the sins yes. of the whole world. Yes, amen. See, Jesus' blood was sufficient enough to cover the whole world. Yes. That amen. anybody that call upon the name of the Lord, well, shall be He's saved. saved. Therefore, we need to go on yes. and do the things and trust in God and trust in God that He had given us the Holy Ghost. Yes. Trust in God that He had given us the Scriptures and the wisdom to be able to walk a pure life. Yes. Holy and acceptable unto God. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that we have the trust and the faith and the belief in you. Lord, I just thank you for everything that you've done for us. Mm -hmm. I thank you for this church. I thank you for my brother. I thank you, Lord God, for giving the knowledge and the wisdom to God. Yes, amen, Jesus. Oh, God, to, to walk in faith. Uh -huh, yeah. And to walk in the light. Right. And not children of the night of the, yeah. of the day. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If anybody needs to come up for prayer.